I'm Carolina Vinado from the University of Washington, the Clean Energy Institute, and today I'm going to show you how to make coin cells. Um, for battery manufacturing, moisture plays a critical role, so we keep everything in the dry and oven. We'll be needing a flask with a stir bar. The cathode material we'll be casting, in this case, uh, lithium cobalt oxide. The carbon black, the PVDF, and that'd be it. Um, we're going to need to weigh the amount of active material we'll be needing. Um, for this particular cathode material, 85% uh, of lithium cobalt oxide, 7.5% uh, of carbon black, and 7.5% of PVDF will give us um, good properties. So that's what we'll be weighing out. You want to keep track of how much of each you weigh out so that you can properly calculate how much percent of your cathode will be the active material. Uh, for this mixture, uh, 2 to 1 percent by weight of solvent to solid materials ratio will give you good viscosity. It depends mostly on the surface area of your materials, but for this one, 2 to 1 will give us um, good properties. So we just pipe it the NMP into our flask. After that, we just drop the magnet and put it on the stirring base overnight to stir, so that it will give us um, good homogeneity. Since we're casting a cathode material, we'll be using aluminum foil. This is battery grade aluminum foil. If we were casting in an anode, we would be using copper foil which would be this one, but we're doing lithium cobalt oxide, so we should be using aluminum. Casting can be done using a doctor blade, but we're gonna go ahead and use tape and a razor to cast our materials. First, you'll want to put a little bit of NMP on the glass surface that you're gonna be doing the casting. And then, Ideally, you would cast on the less shiny side of the aluminum foil. Put a little bit more of NMP on top. And we'll be using the NMP to remove any oil that the aluminum might have had from manufacturing. We're gonna smooth out the foil, make sure there is no bubbles. We're trying to cast micron thick films, so the bubbles will make a huge impact. So this is the space where I'm gonna be casting, since this is the space I was able to successfully smooth out the foil. The amount of tape, if you're using tape, the amount of tape will depend on the thickness. If you want a really thin film, one layer of tape will probably be enough. I want a little bit thicker of a film, so I'm going to use double tape. I'll remove the excess NMP to make sure that I have a dry working surface.
And now with the spoon, I'll quickly pull out as much of the material as possible. And then with the blade, I'll quickly spread out the material. And then we'll cut out the edges. And put the film to dry at around 100 degrees. And we want it to dry until it's no longer shiny to remove the excess NMP. If we don't quickly dry it at first, the film will segregate according to its density and we might end up with a non-uniform film. After 10 minutes of drying in the hot plate, we'll place it in the vacuum oven at 120 degrees overnight. Um, after the strip has dried overnight, we can take it out in calendar for calendaring is optional, it's just to reduce the porosity of the film. Um, first you need to set it to the proper thickness, so I already adjusted it to the proper thickness using the caliber. And you want to make sure you fit your film in both directions to even out the direction of your grains. After calendaring, the surface looks a lot more even and less porous, so it should look fairly shiny. So now we're going to punch the electrodes. Um, to punch the electrodes, I would recommend putting it in between white paper to avoid edge defects. If you don't put it inside white papers, the edges will come a little bit um, cut off. Uh, the only requirement as for the size is that the working electrode must be smaller than your reference electrode and your separator must be bigger than both. So for this one, since we're doing uh, 20 to 32 coin cell, 20 would be the diameter and 32 would be 3.2 millimeters in height. Um, we can use the 15 millimeter punch. So just find a good spot on the strip. And avoid punching too close to the edges, which are normally not very even. After punching, we would be putting them in the glove box. To put them in the glove box, you have to put them on the vacuum. So to avoid having them fly out in the chamber, I put them inside white paper as well. But this is... This is how the punched electro would look like.
In order to be able to calculate the weight in your coin cell, you'll need to weigh them out at this point. Since you already recorded the weight in your slurry of active material, using the percentages, you should be able to calculate how much percent in here is active material. You have to remember to subtract the weight of the, lithium, of the aluminum foil it was cast on. To do this, I recommend punching out several discs of aluminum foil of the same size and weigh them out. Get the average and subtract to the weight of the total. Be careful to keep track of each, how much each electrode weighs. For example, I'm going to call this one number one and put it in slot number one. That way I know which one weighs how much. Also, this would be a good time to measure the thickness. Using a micrometer, you can measure the thickness in several different spots. That way you can get an idea of how even your film is. So now we're going to introduce the electrodes into the glove box. Remember to flush the chamber at least twice. And we're going to be putting gloves on top of the gloves to avoid contamination. We put a piece of paper down to avoid shorting the coin cells accidentally with the metal working surface. Or you can also work on top of plexiglass. In order to assemble several of them in a quick fashion, it's easier to line up all the parts first at once, and then assemble each step of each one of them as you go. So first, there will be the small cap. We'll press the O-ring on it, it should click. Then we'll put the spring in there, the stainless steel spacer, with the lithium attached on top. Then we'll drop the electrolyte, put the separator, and then we can see our aluminum foil with our material cast on top and the large cap on top. And you'll need to label the caps with the numbers of the coin cell. So if this one will be electrode number one, and this one will be electrode number two. So first we would need to place the O-ring on top of the smaller cap and press on it. It should click. Then we'll be taking our lithium disc and press it onto the stainless steel disc, also called a spacer. To assemble it, first put the spring inside the smaller cap and then the lithium with the spacer on top, the lithium must be facing up.
Then we're going to place our separator. Make sure it's properly centered. Next we're, done, we're going to drop the electrolyte. I have a fixed volume pipette set to 20 millimeters. Micrometers. Microliters. and we're gonna prep it the electrolyte right on top of the lithium. And then we can place the electrode with the cast film facing the lithium as centered as possible as well. And then we'll place the large cap on top. For this crimper, the large cap goes on bottom, so we'll need to flip it. And then it'll first click, and then you have to put a lot of pressure into it. If it's properly sealed, you'll notice that the edges are actually curved. So while well, these ones are straight, these ones are fairly curved. So this one has good seal. Now we seal this one. And they're ready to be taken out, washed, and test. Make sure you properly label them. So once you get them out of the glove box, make sure they don't touch each other. You don't want to accidentally short them. And I like to rinse them off in case any electrolyte is on the outside. And then you can label it with your material. And this is what goes into the testing machine. So this is the, since we assemble a half cell cathode material, the large side will be your positive side and the small side would be your negative side or the lithium side. And this is how the edges should look if it's properly crimped. This is a battery testing system from Arbin. It's temperature control, so you can see by the chamber. And once you open it, make sure you just select a channel, put your coin cell in, large side facing up, 
and then you're ready to set the software to run the test. This is the Lanty battery testing system. And this one does not have temperature control, so it would be just room temperature testing.